Okay, the second part of chapter nine here, and the last part, we were talking about GATT, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, and the 1994 round of GATT, negotiating round, was probably the most important. It was called the Uruguay Round, and it emphasized five principles of international trade law under GATT. First, the nations of GATT will meet periodically to reduce tariffs and non-tariff barriers to trade. Second, the GATT nations will strive toward the predictability of trade opportunities. Knowing what tariffs will be means stability and more trade. Third, unconditional most favored nation advantages for all members. If you treat one other GATT country a certain way, you have to treat them all that way. Number four, GATT members will not discriminate in favor of domestically produced goods and against imported goods, except by tariffs. Number five, GATT member nations will seek to eliminate quotas and other non-tariff barriers and to convert these non-tariff barriers to simple tariffs. History of GATT, again, since 1947, there have been a series of GATT negotiating sessions, informally called rounds. The rounds have occurred in 1947, 1948, 1950, 1956, 1960 to 61, 1964 to 67, 1973 to 79, 1986 to 94, which was the Uruguay round, and 2003 to 2004. The first five rounds of GATT negotiations basically dealt with tariffs. However, the later rounds dealt with eliminating non-tariff barriers and turning them into simple tariffs. Uh, there have been literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars in reduced tariffs as a result of GATT. World trade has been immensely, immensely benefited by GATT. Uh, In the Uruguay round, many tariffs were cut by 35, 40%. Some of them eliminated. There is a current or the newest round is the DOHA, D-O-H-A round. However, it deals more with assisting developing countries. Now the word tarification, tarification means converting non-tariff barriers to tariffs, which is one of the goals of GATT. Let's get rid of these ridiculous non-tariff barriers like filling in paperwork that's impossible and simply make that type of limitation into tariffs. Once the barriers are converted to tariffs, tariff rates can be negotiated downward and the global economy improves. You might find interesting on page 290 the uh, the case about the European Economic Community and bananas. Non-discrimination in GATT simply means that one nation will not play favorites in trade in favor of another nation. This concept can be seen acted out in the most favored nations principles, which require, as I've said, that any trade advantage or privilege granted by one GATT member to goods or services of another GATT member must be granted to all GATT members. Most favored nations treatment for imported goods greatly increases trade flows between nations. Under GATT, most favored nations treatment is the norm. Whatever advantage you give to one, you give to all. In the past 30 years, the United States has normalized diplomatic and trade relations with Russia, Vietnam, China, 
This has not only led to greatly increased trade, but to greater interpersonal contacts. Uh, very common today on the streets of the United States to find folks from China and from Russia. Note that GATT also looks in a friendly manner toward regional trade uh, uh, groups as in the European Union. That does not violate GATT, rather GATT encourages such things in the new U.S.-Canada-Mexico agreement. Okay, one final thing, a note that the goal of GATT is to eliminate international quotas and tariffs in any way possible. All right, that's it for chapter nine.